The DWAS Synergy workflow allows for the live and simultaneous planning of implant surgeries and implant restorations. Here we have a case in co-diagnostics with a missing lateral, uh, tooth number seven, and we have the same case in DWAS that's beginning to be worked up. We have the STL files imported and we have the tooth anatomy proposed by the software. We can now use the tools in DWAS to adjust that anatomy and idealize it for the location. Using my multi-designer, I can adjust the vertical axis of the tooth. I can adjust the position of the tooth. Obviously the size of the tooth matching the contralateral. I can adjust my gingival margin. And once the tooth is designed the way we want it to be in DWAS, we can then open a synergy connection with Codiagnostics to make this case visible through the Codiagnostics surgical planning application. I establish my synergy connection and all the STL files from my DWAS case are now shared to the synergy server. Jumping over to Codiagnostics, <clears throat> I inquire with the Synergy server for incoming cases and sure enough I've got one here shared with me a few seconds ago. I connect to it and the components of the case are downloaded into my Codiagnostics case and I'm prompted to, prompted to pair the tooth anatomy from the cone beam scan with the tooth anatomy in the STL file. We do this simply by identifying areas of like anatomy, uh, tooth cusp on that second bicuspid, looks good in both scans as does that central and around the other side we've got a lingual distal cusp on that molar. Using those three points the software then merges the scans and gives us the opportunity to adjust or verify that merging as needed. <clears throat> and scrolling through it here in the chrono slice I can see that my adaptation to the palate is near perfect and the adaptation to the teeth in the areas where there is no scatter is near perfect as well. Obviously this case has a lot of scatter but we're still able to merge in the scan nicely. We'll look at it through the sagittal slice as well and see that the adaptation as I mentioned is near perfect. So we'll go ahead and accept that. and we now have the DWAS case visible in Codiagnostics overlaid with the bone. Now having added a tooth to the case in Codiagnostics we've identified that tooth site so that now when I add an implant to the case and we'll choose a bone level uh, tapered implant for this case here we go narrow body implant. It automatically adds that implant along the long axis of that tooth because the tooth site is identified for us. So the initial placement of the implant is perfect prosthetically. Obviously we'll need to make some adjustments to put it into the bone and we'll do that in just a second. First you'll notice that DWAS is called for our attention <clears throat> it has detected that an implant has been added to the case and it's asking us what implant kit we want to use to connect that implant to our prosthetic. We have available to us any implant kit that is in your DWAS library. So we'll choose here a tie base appropriate for this implant. And I now have the implant visible in DWAS. You'll notice now as I adjust the implant position in Codiagnostics that the implant position in DWAS is connected live and will be updated simultaneously. And if we're going to plan for a screw retained restoration, we can do something like this. And obviously we've got a bone defect on the buckle here that will need to be taken care of at time of surgery. 
but that implant position looks pretty good. Once we lock the implant position, that communicates over to DWAS that that is a finalized implant position, and we can now take this tooth anatomy and implant position, which are currently not connected, and we can connect them and design the emergence profile in order to create an immediate provisional. So in this case here, we'll choose a full crown on implant. It's now going to take that implant position, connect it to the tooth anatomy. The initial connection is done with just a default emergence profile suggested by, <coughs> by DWAS. We'll need to adjust that, of course, and that is easy to do. We'll select our tooth, bring up our multi-designer, and at the bottom of the clinical handles tab, there is my 2D cut plane mode. And here is where I can adjust that emergence profile quite easily. I can see my soft tissue margin right here. I can see the shoulder of my tie base. I can adjust that profile to be as convex or concave as I want it to be, or I can individually adjust the circles to design my emergence. Moving around the implant, we adjust the emergence and contour at each site. And then if we want to, we can use the smoothing tools. Put a nice finish on that tooth. So here we have a screw retained provisional designed prior to surgery that can be milled and delivered with the drill guide. through the Synergy process. Okay. Meanwhile, over in Code Diagnostics, everything we just did in DWAS is visible. So we have the tooth contours, we have the emergence profile, we have the tie base, and if there are any collisions with the bone, as we see right here, we'll know to take care of those at time of surgery. Okay. We can also look at this emergence on the 3D model, and verify that implant position relative to the tooth. And now it's time to design a drill guide. First thing for designing a drill guide is putting a sleeve on that implant. Go ahead and choose a Strawman sleeve for a Strawman guided surgery protocol. It's a lateral place. There isn't quite uh, space for a five millimeter sleeve. We'll drop down to a 2.8. And there's my sleeve. We can verify the sleeve is not bumping into any neighboring anatomy. And then design our drill guide. First step in the drill guide design wizard is setting the insertion path of the guide on the model. And then building the model. Once we have the model built, we simply decide which teeth we want to have plastic covering. In this case here, I'm going to go from second bicuspid to second bicuspid. This gives me sufficient coverage around the arch to make sure the guide is not going to lift off the anatomy without my seeing it. It'd be a nice and stable guide with full coverage. By determining, by adjusting, controlling how large or small these circles are, I control how much I want that plastic to cover down on the lingual. If I need to, I can even cover in additional coverage for the plastic of my guide. If I want to build in some palatal coverage there we have that option. We have full control over how thick the guide is, 
how tight we want it made to the teeth. And if we have any connectors involved, we can choose regular or large connectors. The software now builds the guide for us based on all the parameters we entered and the coverage that we selected. And we're given this proposal. You can see over here the area of extra palatal coverage I chose. In this case, we probably don't need that, but in some cases you may want to build up some extra palatal coverage. You'll notice there's very little access from the buckle to that surgical site, and in guided surgery, access is very important. So we will add an inspection window at that site to open it up. We'll also add an inspection window over each first bicuspid just to detect if the guide is lifting off at all during surgery so we have no surprises on the implant trajectory. If the guide lifts off at all, then that will throw off the trajectory of the guide and we don't want that to happen. There's our drill guide. We can now label it with the patient name, the lab name, the doctor's name, anything we want to do. Put surgical information at the surgical site. And there we have our final drill guide and our immediate prosthetic, both available for delivery prior to surgery.